قال المؤلف رحمه الله the author may Allah have mercy upon him said وخالف في ذلك ابن حزم فقال Ibn Hazm opposed in that concerning that issue and he said so first opposed what Ibn Hazm said Allah could take a son for himself or else he would be weak he said inna Allah azza wa jalla qadirun an yattakhidha walada he said Allah azza wa jal has the power to take on a child إذ لو لم يقدر عليه لكان عاجزا. Since had he not had the power to do so, he would have been weak. That's what Ibn Hazm said. So that's the saying of the Christians and the philosophers too. So the Christians they say Allah could take a child for himself, or else he'd be weak. The atheists say God, if there is a God, because if he's an atheist, he doesn't believe there's a God. The atheists would say. God, if there is one, he should be able to destroy himself. Or if there's God, then he should he should be able to make one like himself. He should be able to make someone like himself. All of these are the same case to say or to ask, can Allah make a child for himself? Can Allah create a rock that he can't lift? Can Allah create someone like himself? Can Allah destroy himself? All of these are questions about the impossible. They're questions about the impossible. So we talked about that last time. How do we know this impossible? Because, because the question requires a yes or a no. Like to say, can God take a child for himself? This question requires yes or no. Can God make someone like himself? Can God create a rock that he can't lift? Can God destroy himself? Yes or no? The problem is, though, if you say yes, that leads to something impossible, which is to say God is weak. And if you say no, that also leads to something impossible, which is to also get, say God is weak. If someone says, can God create a rock that he can't lift? If you say yes, that means he can be defeated by a creation. If you say no, it means he's weak. If someone says, can God destroy himself? If you say yes, then it means he can be destroyed. If you say no, it means he's weak. So here someone asks us a yes or no question, and both answers are incorrect. So if, the, if, if a question requires yes or no, and both yes and no are wrong, that means then the question is wrong. So then the entire question is invalid. And what makes it invalid is that this person is asking about something impossible in the first place. So we say, we don't say yes and we don't say no. You can't answer either of those. You have to say, for example, the power of Allah does not pertain to that. Or you could say your question is invalid. Yani, how do you answer that if you're outside and you're talking to somebody and he says to you, can God create a rock that he can't lift? Or anything like that. So how do you answer that? Because you want to answer with the correct answer. Excuse me. And you also want to answer with something that's clear for the person you're talking to and for whoever else might be around. So you can answer that in two ways. You could say, the power of Allah does not pertain to that the power of Allah does not pertain to that but there's a good chance then that the person you're talking about doesn't understand what that means so if it were me I would say to that person your question is invalid then he's going to say how's my question invalid so then I will say to him because you asked me a yes or a no question and yes is wrong and no is wrong so that means your question is wrong so then he might say, how is it wrong? Then I'll explain. Because if I say yes, it means this. If I say no, it means this. So this is what this guy Ibn Hazm fell into. He said, Inna Allah Azza wa Jalla qadirun an yattakhidha walada. He said, certainly Allah Azza wa Jal has the power to take on a child. Idh lam yaqudir alayhi lakana ajiza. Because... 
had he not had the power to do so, he would have been weak. And this which Ibn Hazm said is not binding, meaning it's not necessary. Because taking on a child is something impossible for Allah, meaning impossible to attribute to Allah. Some people think that there's no such thing as an impossibility. They say nothing is impossible because God can do anything. You say to that person, God can do anything possible. Not impossible. If it happened, that means it's possible. Because if it's impossible, it won't happen. They say, well, nothing is impossible. God can create anything. Nothing is impossible. So you say to that person, you have to clarify for that person. When we say that something is impossible, that doesn't put a limitation on God. When we say that something is impossible, that's putting a limitation on the created thing itself. Created things have limitations. So a created thing, for example, cannot be standing up and sitting down at the same time. It's just impossible. It can't be. It can't happen. Uh, so the fact that the created thing can't stand and sit at the same time, that, that proves that there's one God. That's evidence that there's one God. The fact that there are opposites that can't exist simultaneously, that proves that there's one God. Had there been more than one God, then it would be valid and possible for, for opposites to exist simultaneously. And that's impossible. So there are, there are impossible matters, but the limitation is for the creation, not for the creator. Uh, so what Ibn Hazm said is not true. He said, he said, had Allah not had the power to create a son, to take a child for himself, he would be weak. We say that's not binding because this is something impossible. This is something that just would not happen. What is intellectually impossible is does not pertain to the power of Allah. Because it doesn't come into existence. Yani, remember the definition of the power of Allah. His attribute by which he brings something into existence from nothing. It is his attribute by which he makes something exist from nothingness. And then make something, make something go out of existence back to nothing. That's his attribute called al-qudra, power. His attribute by which he makes something exist after it was not existing, and then he renders it non-existent after it was existing. So then, for something to pertain to this attribute, that means it has to accept two things, existence and non-existence. For something to pertain to this attribute, to be relevant, <clears throat> or to relate to this attribute of power, it has to accept two things existence and non-existence like we do we accept existence and we accept non-existence we were not existing at one time and now we do exist and then there shall come a time when we don't exist anymore the impossible is something that does not accept existence so that means then it doesn't pertain to the power and also allah ta'ala he exists necessarily that means he only ex he only has existence not non-existence. Allah, God himself, has existence only, not non-existence. So then, even God himself, he doesn't pertain to his own power. That means he didn't create himself. Allah always existed eternally and everlastingly. He didn't create himself and no one created him. His power doesn't pertain to himself because by his power, he makes something exist after it wasn't existing. But he was always existing. In any way, something can't create itself. That's impossible. For something to create itself would mean that it existed before itself in order to make itself. And then it existed after itself by being created by itself. So that's all absurd. And that's all irrational. That's all impossible. Impossibilities don't occur. 
So, وَالْمُحَالُ الْعَقْلِيُّ لَا يَدْخُلُ تَحْتَ الْقُدْرَةِ The intellectual impossibility does not pertain to the power of Allah. وَعَدَمُ تَعَلُّقِ الْقُدْرَةِ بِالشَّيْءِ And for power not to pertain to something, now we mean power just as a meaning, this meaning of power. For power to not pertain to something. تَارَةً يَكُونُ لِكُسُورِهَا عَنْهِ Sometimes that would be because that power is deficient concerning that matter. وَذَلِكَ فِي الْمَخْلُوقِ And that is for the creations, like ourselves. We have some created power. So can I, with my created power, can I make something exist from nothing? I cannot. So my power doesn't pertain to that. Or even, for example, most likely if I went outside to pick up a car, I won't be able to. If Allah give me the strength, I could, but I probably don't have that. So also then my power is deficient in that. So sometimes for power to not pertain to something, that's because of the the deficiency of that power. وَتَارَةً يَكُونُ لِعَدَمِ قَبُولِ ذَلِكَ الشَّيْءِ الدُّخُولَ فِي الْوُجُودِ And sometimes power does not pertain to something because the thing at, in question does not enter into existence. Sometimes power does not pertain to something because the thing in question does not enter into existence. So what does not enter into existence? You have two cases of what does not enter into existence. The impossible doesn't enter into existence. And God, the necessary one, doesn't enter into existence. The impossible doesn't enter into existence because it cannot happen. And the, the necessary one doesn't enter into existence because he always existed. So... وَتَارَةً يَكُونُ لِعَدَمِ قَبُولِ ذَلِكَ الشَّيْءِ الدُّخُولَ فِي الْوُجُودِ Sometimes power does not pertain to something because that thing in question does not accept entrance into existence. A حُدُوثَ الْوُجُودِ Meaning it, the thing in question doesn't accept to happen, to occur. Because God is not a happening or an occurrence or an event. لِكَوْنِهِ مُسْتَحِيلًا عَقْلِيًا أَوْ لِعَدَمِ قَبُولِ ذَلِكَ شَيْءِ الْعَدَمِ Because of the thing being intellectually impossible, it would not accept to eventually exist. Or because the thing in question doesn't even accept non-existence, which is the case for God. لِكَوْنِهِ وَاجِبًا عَقْلِيًا Because he is necessarily existing. He is existing necessarily according to the intellect.